Hi and welcome back to our Lent devotions as we run up to the Easter weekend this year. We continue in this first stage of our studies looking at the picture of hope which runs right through the Old Testament, looking forward and pointing us to the coming of Jesus. Having looked yesterday at one of the items of the tabernacle furniture, today we're going to look at one of the feasts in the Jewish year, the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur. This has been described as the holiest and the most solemn of the events in the Jewish calendar. There are three holy days in the autumn every year. The first is Rosh Hashanah, which is the civil Jewish New Year. Rosh Hashanah literally means head of the year and it starts a 10 day period of repentance often referred to by the Jews as the 10 days of awe. This culminates with the second feast day Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement and then the third holy day in the autumn is Sukkot the Feast of Tabernacles just a few days later. But this morning we're considering the Day of Atonement God gives Moses the instructions for this feast in Leviticus chapter 16. After the event of Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, when they offered strange fire to the Lord, God then gives this instruction. And the first thing to note is that Aaron could no longer approach the holiest place in the tabernacle except for on one day every year, otherwise he would surely die. And in this chapter we get detailed instructions of the preparation for what Aaron and the people of Israel had to do. It was a holiday for all the people, no work to be done at all on the Day of Atonement. Aaron was to wash himself and then put on the priestly clothes and he was to take the prescribed animals and sacrifice them for the different offerings. First he did this for himself. And then he repeated the process on behalf of all the people of Israel. And Aaron the high priest, he alone would enter the Holy of Holies. That place right at the heart of the tabernacle. That place where the presence of Almighty God was known. Aaron would enter with a censer full of coals of fire taken from the altar. And two handfuls of incense. And most importantly, some of the blood from the sacrifices. The blood would then be sprinkled on the mercy seat above the Ark of the Covenant. Remember, we looked at that yesterday. And once Aaron had done this twice for his own sins and then on behalf of the people for their sins, he would place his hands on the head of the goat that was still living. And he would confess over the animal all the sins of the people. In doing this, he was transferring the guilt from the people onto the goat and the goat was then sent out into the wilderness carrying all the sins of the people on it. This is where we get the expression a scapegoat from um, and it was a symbolic act the, 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 the going out of the goat into the wilderness with the sins on it it was a symbolic act to take away the wrongdoings of the children of Israel so that they could be forgiven. Now all of this is a picture of the work of the Lord Jesus when he suffered and died to pay the penalty for the things that we have done wrong. It's the sacrifice of Jesus and the shedding of his blood which, is, which has enabled us to come into the very presence of God. This sacrifice of Jesus atoned for the things that we have done wrong or put it another way it makes amends for our sins. Remember what we saw with the Passover lamb a few days ago. God said there, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The scapegoat is also seen in the work of Jesus on the cross. Because of what he did, he took away our guilt and we can be seen by God as cleansed from our sins. Romans 8 tells us, doesn't it? There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now for the children of Israel this act of atonement had to be done every year and if they had sinned shortly after the holy day of Yom Kippur they had to wait a whole year to have that assurance of forgiveness. But when we come to the work of Jesus he made that sacrifice once and for all. 
Such was the perfection of what he offered to God. Such was the completeness of what he did on the cross that the atoning work of Jesus need never be repeated ever again. No matter the wrongs that you and I may continue to do against a holy and righteous God, the work of Jesus on the cross was sufficient to cover it all. And because of that, we can have that complete and absolute assurance that we are forgiven by God. Immediately. It's not a case of hopefully in 12 months time if the high priest completes the ritual sacrifice in the correct way. No. As soon as we repent, as soon as we acknowledge the wrong that we have done and say sorry to God, we can know that immediate forgiveness, the guilt completely gone. So again, as you read through Leviticus 16 today, don't see the Day of Atonement as a quirky ritual observed by the Jews past and present, but see it as a beautiful picture of what Jesus did on the cross 2,000 years ago, which ultimately enables us to know God's forgiveness for everything that we've ever done wrong. Come to Jesus afresh today. Acknowledge what he has done to make you and I clean before God. And let us worship him this morning. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we do thank you for the sacrifice that you made on the cross. We thank you that we can have peace with God because of what you did. We thank you that, we, that the guilt has completely been removed. And we can know what it is for there to be no condemnation because of your work on the cross, Lord Jesus. Help us as we consider this today. Help us to worship you in your precious holy name. Amen. God bless you. And we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.